Hello followers and friends, you have joined me for a brand new and first of its kind video here on my channel. What I intend to do, if you'll allow me a little bit of your time, is I intend to give you an introductory course uh, on the three leading manufacturers of Monster Jam replicas, um, in diecast anyway, currently in the market. And why am I doing a video of this kind? This doesn't really add up to anything I do on this channel, other than, of course, it is diecast related. Well, if you look at the one in the middle, that's a green light collectible. It can be argued that is leaning towards the scale of adult collectibles. I would definitely say that the one on the left, made by Mattel, is not at all geared towards adult collectibles. Uh, and the one on the right, the monster, mo monster truck that you see, uh, is made by a company called Spin Master. And I could go either way on that. So we'll go over all of these individually. But my main idea for this video was to show you three leading manufacturers from three different companies of three different series and eras in the sport of monster trucks. So if perhaps you've never seen these before and this is something you wanted to start collecting, I wanted to give you a very brief introduction and overview and kind of give you my thoughts on them. Now, I'm no expert on monster trucks or the sport, um, but I do know enough just to get by. So... Feel free to throw in your two cents throughout this video. Leave it down in the comments section below. I'd love to hear what you say. Uh, but again, don't take my word as gospel. There are way better monster truck experts out there, including a couple really, really good YouTube channels that are dedicated just to Monster Jam toys, collectibles, and of course the sport of monster trucks as well. So be sure to check those out. Okay, let's get started first with the truck on your left. And we will obviously take a look at the other ones. So this is made by Mattel under their Hot Wheels brand of the Hot Wheels Monster Trucks. This is called Snake Bite Vinny Venom. It says number 28 of 75. Plus Connect and Crash Car, which is that plastic thing that I guess passes to be a crashed car. Um, and if they're doing sub-series, which I assume they do because that's what Hot Wheels does with everything, the sub-series would be Crash Legends, and this is number 5 of 11. So, this one, Snakebite, I do vaguely remember um, a Snakebite monster truck in the real world in the 90s that looked a whole lot like this. So while I'm not willing to bet any amount of money, I, with some degree of certainty, would say this is a replica of a truck that actually exists, uh, or existed in the past. So, uh, kind of cool there. I don't know for a fact... But I do remember reading somewhere years ago that I believe the snake bike truck was either owned or a teammate to the original Bigfoot trucks out of St. Louis, Missouri. Again, could be completely wrong on that. If somebody does have the 411 and accurate information, please chime in in the comments section below. So, initial impressions are this is definitely more of a toy than an adult collectible. The wheels are way, way, way oversized to the actual casting. Uh, the proportions are way off. There's a lot of plastic that's used. It just doesn't seem like it's appealing, honestly. Like, like you would buy this for your, your son or daughter, uh, or your grandchildren, or your, your niece or nephew, or something, something along those lines. You certainly would not buy this if you are a serious adult collector. Um, on the back, before we open this, on the back... We have about eight trucks, which I assume are also in the Hot Wheels line. Um, they're wanting to start some sort of, like, game here, which, you know, their strength, venomous velocity, and their crashing abilities, quick strike, which I guess would be fun for kids. Doesn't do much for me, personally. These, I don't recall other than Snake Bite. I don't recall seeing any of these, either on TV or... Uh, anywhere in the real world. Again, I could be wrong. Now, I know nowadays Hot Wheels actually sanctions their own Monster Truck series. Uh, I believe it's Hot Wheels Monster Trucks Live, again, if memory serves me correct. But it's not very many trucks, and I don't think they have the viewership uh, or the popularity of the primary Monster Truck series, which I believe used to be called Monster Jam. I think it still is called Monster Jam, and it used to be the, uh, the US, US HRA. United States Hot Rod Association sanctioned that. All right, so enough talk. Let's get this out and take a closer look at it. 
here is your accessory piece that it comes with, which is this plastic crunched car, which actually, uh, I do know a little bit about this because this looks like a crushed, crazy time attack taxi that is actually a real Hot Wheels casting from about 10 years or so ago when I was more into Hot Wheels. Uh, well, probably more like 15 years ago. Anyway, it's a real Hot Wheels casting of a real Hot Wheels car. We don't really care about that. Here is the monster truck. As I said, the wheels are, are really too big on this. The proportions are off. It is definitely toy-like. I'm not sure if it's intended to have working steering, but it, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could kind of look like it's steering. Uh, I do know that monster trucks have front and rear steering capabilities, so you have that a little bit. The decal work, again, is not of the highest standard. You can see kind of the snake gills. Uh, Firestone, Summit Equipment, Hot Wheels Monster Trucks, Vinny Venom up here, Snake Bite, and Firestone Tires. The front of it has the snake teeth. That's cool. And uh, also, obviously, your, your snake eyes and Snake Bite at the rear. Again, the chassis really just flops around. It doesn't particularly look that great. Uh, this, this is definitely one I know I've probably said it like 10 times now. But uh, this is one I would certainly give to a child and not necessarily an adult collector. That's what it looks like crushing the uh, accessory that it comes with. Nice chrome engine, though, inside. And I would bet that that is probably a metal piece. The roll cage chassis, that is all black plastic. And uh, it is what it is. Now, for price, I'll try to remember to do this on each of these. I actually found all of these at the same place. I picked up kind of one of each just to do this video. Uh, this one was the least expensive of the three. I don't think this one was more than five bucks. Uh, honestly, I don't think it's really worth that. But, uh, you know, what's what's five bucks to you? It's different for every person. So, all right, that is the Hot Wheels one. Let's now go to the Spin Master. Again, we're not going in any particular order. This is a real monster truck. And not only is it a real replica of a real monster truck, but there are several teammates, I guess, if you want to use a term from a racing term from other racing series. Um, I believe this was the original. This was the regular Monster Mutt, but since then there's been Monster Mutt Poodles, Monster Mutt Dalmatians, Monster Mutt Rockweilers, um, several other Monster Mutt trucks that uh, used to tour around the world and around the states. Uh, the packaging is nice. It is definitely a better presentation than the Hot Wheels one. You can see the background has a couple other monster trucks. That one looks like a dragon, and that one looks like... Uh, well, I was going to say a fish, but it looks more like a shark. But anyway, uh, 164 scale, so this is definitely coming right out and telling you that they tried to get this closer to an actual scale. I like that a lot. Um, it is more of... I'm not going to say a presentation style. It's not, but it's, it's more of a better use of space. Uh, it's very appealing. You have bright colors here. It just looks more professional. And again, you have the official Monster Jam logo here, which I like. Over here to the right, you have Series 22. Looks like this does come with an accessory as well. I'm assuming that's a crushed car, and it might be like a pamphlet or something in there. We'll take a look at it here in just a minute. And then on the back, you see the other trucks that are in this series. So there's Max D, El Toro Loco. I know that's a real truck. Gravedigger, obviously everyone knows that. Another Gravedigger. Um, not sure what they're going with with these colored wheels. I'm not a huge fan of that. That's very unrealistic. You would never see that. Uh, Son of a Digger. That's another real truck. I remember seeing him at one of the shows I attended. Uh, he's literally Grave Digger's... The, the driver of Grave Digger's son literally drives Son of a Digger. There's the connection there, for those that may not be familiar. Lumberjack. I don't know if that's a real truck. If it is, it's very new. Uh, Megalodon, which looks like the shark on the front, but that's painted differently, so they might, again, they might be teammates, I don't know. And then Storm Damage, and obviously Monster Mutt is the one that's inside the box. Alright, let's crack this open. Again, hope you guys are enjoying this video. Please, please, please leave your thoughts in the comments section below. If you guys are finding this video helpful or enjoyable, or if I'm totally screwing this up, let me know. Any feedback at all as long as it's constructive, is helpful. All right, so, reluctantly, here's the monster truck out of the box. We have an orange crushed car. 
Looks like a car from the 70s. <coughs> Pardon me. And then the last thing, it's not a pamphlet. I guess you could call it a pamphlet. It looks more like a, a fold-out catalog or, you know what, it might even be a poster. It's probably what it is. Yeah, it looks like it's a little mini. Hey, and it's of the truck we're looking at. How convenient. So there is Monster Mutt in action. There's the model. I mean, they even got the BKT printing on the tires. So that's pretty darn good. I mean, actually, if we could, if we, if I had a way to prop this up in the background and we'd go and do a, an in-depth review of the toy and say, all right, this is, this is inaccurate. This is inaccurate. But for the most part, honestly, they, they nailed this. I can tell you that the ears, you know, they only have the ears as it's brown. It doesn't have like the inside color. It would kind of be nice if they had that slapped up. I think that'd be cool. Uh, another thing, they don't have the contingency sponsors. At least that's what they're called in racing series that I am very familiar with. These would be called the contingency sponsors. They'd be here. Uh, they don't have that. But they do have the BKT printing on the tires, which, again, I mentioned that before, but I like that. Um, the leash is pretty good. They have the leash on them. They have the dog tag back here. Monster Mutt. I mean, it looks, it looks pretty dead on. There's the mouth with the teeth. More or less going the same direction. Perhaps the outer portion of the the mouth on the model. Perhaps maybe a shade too dark. Perhaps they could lighten that up. Overall, pretty darn good. Okay, other side. These are just the same trucks that I went over on the back. So these are the other ones that are in the same series. We've already looked at these on the back of the package, so we're not going to waste any more time. Okay, back to the truck. Obviously, I'm very impressed with this. This does look like it's more or less the same the scale that it should be for 164 scale. The tires are proportionate to the body and the chassis. Um, I do like the fact that they have the mouth hanging out. Um, one of the shows I did attend, this was at it. Couldn't tell you if it was Monster Mutt or one of the other 17 variations of Monster Mutt through the years. But I do remember seeing this, this chassis in this truck. So as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty accurate. Here's your exhaust and everything else. Looks quite good. Again, you do have the ability for the wheels to turn. Again, I'm not sure if that's something that they actually intended for them. The degree of body roll on this is pretty aggressive. And it looks quite good. And then if you wanted to put the car underneath it. Should stay up there. So, for my money, already out of the two, this one is miles ahead. And I think... This one was maybe only a dollar, at most, three dollars more than the Hot Wheels version. And definitely, in my opinion and for my money, far and away worth it over the Hot Wheels one. Okay, let's take a quick break before we come back and look at the final monster truck featured in this video. All right, welcome back, everyone. Thank you for sticking with me. Hope you've been enjoying this new showcase video on these monster truck toys and models we end the video with the last of the three and this is the only one of the three that i had any interest whatsoever in actually going out and seeking to add to my collection let me explain to you why this truck the 1985 gmc high sierra 2500 specifically named buffalo tremor this truck was owned by a gentleman and campaigned out of buffalo new york which is my hometown where I grew up and spent much of my youth in and uh, obviously the name pretty much a dead giveaway but this truck was out of Buffalo and I do remember at a very young age seeing this truck at a couple shows in western New York um, I don't believe it was this version of Buffalo Tremor because there was one that was a lot more red than this in the early 90s um, but this one will do for now hopefully green light will do the other versions. Anyway, the name of the gentleman skips my mind, which I'm very disappointed in myself. Uh, very Polish last name. So I can't, I, it's something ski. Um, I do remember meeting him at a very, very young age. Had to be less than four or five, but I remember that from being very, very young. So anyway, when Green Light, when I found out that Green Light was doing a replica of his truck, one of his trucks, had to pick it up, had to add it. There's the personal connection. Now the video is kind of, kind of sort of making sense. So I figured I would 
grab one of each from the three manufacturers, critique them, and uh, hopefully those of you that are watching this video can find it helpful if you want to pick up a couple of these for your collection and you can see each of the three different brands. So, back to this. Greenlight Series Kings of Crunch. Um, first off, Greenlight is a company that primarily caters to the adult collector. Um, it's certainly not Spin Master. It's definitely not Hot Wheels. Uh, their stuff, they have many different brands. They have everything from on-highway trucks to vehicles with trailers to 124 scale, 116 scale stuff. They even have small diorama sets. They got a lot of stuff, but primarily they focus on everything in 164 scale. If you have a Meyer store near you, which I'm very fortunate that I have a couple uh, near me, you can almost always find new green lights in Meyer. If you don't, you can go on any of the re online retailers. 3000 Toys is a good one. Uh, there are many others that carry Kings of Crunch, or carry all green light products. At any rate, uh, green light is certainly out of these three anyway, uh, top of the top of the chart in terms of detail and uh, what they offer. However, this Kings of Crunch series, at least what I've looked at, seems to be all very, very early on monster trucks from the uh, late 70s to the mid 90s. Um, and they do have some good ones. I've, I've seen USA 1, which was a very famous monster truck. They do have pretty much all of the Bigfoots, uh, including the one with the Alaskan military vehicle tires that are huge uh, that Bob Chandler put on one of his. I think that's Bigfoot 7 or Bigfoot 5. I don't remember. Again, I'm not an expert here. Um, and then they have the original Bigfoot, of course. And they even have like a, a pickup truck and a trailer and a Bigfoot to go on it. So if you're a Bigfoot fan, check out Greenlight. They got a lot of stuff. Back to this truck. This is Kings of Crunch Series 11. You, normally there are five other ones in the set besides the one you pick up. So that's obviously a total of six. 85 GMT High Sierra 2500 Buffalo Tremor on the back. We can see the other ones that are in this series. So we have Titan, which was a 72 Chevrolet C10. Uh, we have Thunder Beast. Again, another truck I remember seeing in person, which is a 76 Ford F250. Uh, Crime Time State Trooper. I never saw that, but that was a 79 Ford F250. <clears throat> uh, Buffalo Tremor, we already mentioned that. Black Stallion, did remember seeing him. He was a 92 Ford F250. And then Wildfoot, I believe I also saw him. And if memory serves me correct, maybe just because I'm seeing Foot in the name, but Wildfoot would lead me to believe he's also, or was also a teammate of Bigfoot, um, but he was a 93 Ford F-250 as well. Down here in the box, you can see 164 scale, limited edition collectible, ages 14 and up. Here's your OEM uh, licenses down here, copyright 2022. I have always said this about Greenlight, whether, because I collect other things that Greenlight does, specifically their SD and HD truck lines, um, by far my two favorite series by them. Anyway, that's not important. What is important is I despise the style of packaging that they use. They use it because it's inexpensive to mass produce these models. And for the most part, it's the better option of being able to get these things to consumers for as low of a cost to them as they can, while still protecting the integrity of the model to the best of their ability. Now, lately... It's no secret that Greenlight has faced scrutiny over their uh, quality control issues, whether that be paint um, and decals and smudges and even just completely missing pieces from the factory. But what I would like to see done, and it doesn't cost that much more, is for Greenlight to use just a squared off package for their 164 scale models. Just a squared off style package that you can open from one side flap so you can protect your models better after you open them while still retaining the overall value of your investment. Greenlight stuff isn't cheap. Uh, their most inexpensive thing that they offer is typically just one of their 164 scale cars. And those are still seven, eight, nine dollars uh, in today's money. Absolutely, they can re-engineer re and redesign the box style. You want to talk about those SD and HD trucks that I mentioned? Go to a Hobby Lobby which is another store, a physical store that you can go to. Those things are 20, 25 bucks in today's money. You can't tell me there's no excuse why they can't re-engineer the boxes and keep those things nice. 
So, that's my two cents. I'm interested to hear yours. In the meantime, we are stuck with this style packaging. So, here's the solution that uh, it's not really a solution. You're still killing the value of the, of the package. But here's a temporary thing that I came up with. You take an X-Acto knife, you cut here all the way around up to here, which I've already done. And then you lift up the back of the flap. So essentially, when you're done with the model, although the value of the model now goes to used, and of course the packaging is open, you can at least put your model back in the box. So if you are moving, or you, know, you live in an area of, let's say, dust, which is everywhere, or perhaps you have pets, because your girlfriend insists on having pets, you can put your model back in the package safely without having to worry about any of that nonsense. So let's go ahead and pop it open from the back. Just like that. See that? And then go ahead and peel off the back piece. Peel it back. And then reach out and grab the truck, which I'm going to have to pull this closer to me. So bear with me a second. Just take a minute here. Here we are. There's the truck. Grab it. Take it out. You're ready to go. Again, this is not ideal, and uh, to me, there is no reason that this couldn't be looked at and rectified, but uh, I have made myself, uh, made my opinions and made my ideas clear to Greenlight, and as they, uh, as they have every right to, they have different ideas and plans, and that's their prerogative, it's their business, but I do think that it would bring more collectors into the field and, and buying their products if they knew they could retain some collectability value with their products. All right, Buffalo Tremor. Good looking truck. Uh, the, the brown color is perhaps not the most appealing. Again, there was a red Buffalo Tremor. But what breaks it up is the, the yellow or the reddish yellow, let's call it orange just to go in the middle, chassis. And you have the, the roll bar up here with your lights. Um, and then you do have some pinstriping up on the hood, also in that same yellow color. It looks good. GMC right here in the chrome grill. Your large diff and stuff on the axles. Uh, your lug nuts and your center hub there look really, really good. There is a good amount of die cast used. It's pretty hefty, uh, but there's also a lot of plastic used. On the back, you can see GMC here on the tailgate. And the, I'll call it a tarp, but the bed cover with that black simulated paint also looks pretty good. Finally, we take one more look at the Buffalo Tremor logo decal. And that is pretty, uh, pretty accurate to when this truck was actually run in the real world. That shows, which I think looks very good. So, let's wrap this video up. We're already nearly at 25 minutes here. Here's my thoughts, guys. You really can't go wrong um, with these two. This is going to be your most expensive out of the three, without without question. Um, I think this was ten ten dollars. Uh, this was either six or seven, and then the Hot Wheels one was no more than five. And in my opinion, that's a little bit too much for the Hot Wheels one. It really depends on what you want to collect. We do have three very distinct different periods in monster truck history. Uh, we have Greenlight doing the stuff as the sport uh, first started out with the vintage line of Kings of Crunch. So, you know, we have the stuff of the 70s all the way up to the mid uh, 90s before the actual formation of Monster Jam. So then we go to Monster Jam, which is the Spin Master stuff. These are really well built. They look good. The detail on them is good. And crucially, they're produced at a price point uh, and sold for a price point that's completely reasonable. And you, you do feel like you're getting a quality collectible um, for a good price. And I hope that that continues to happen. And I hope that they don't have any major production issues or price increase. But uh, Spin Master, good deal for the money. Good looking piece. And as for the Hot Wheels, we will end with that. Uh, I, I think I've made myself clear, but if I haven't, this is this is kind of the, the early on 
series of monster trucks as well. And into today for the Hot Wheels Monster Truck Live series that tours around the world and a little bit inside the U.S. with, I think it's a half dozen, might be eight trucks that are in that tour, uh, including Bigfoot, which is the big appeal of that series. Bigfoot is not part of Monster Jam. He is part of Monster Trucks Live, which is the Hot Wheels series. Um, I know that can get kind of confusing. It was confusing to me when I was trying to get myself educated to at least have half a chance of knowing what I'm talking about so that I can enlighten you guys and have half a chance of convincing you that uh, you should continue listening to me for 25 minutes. Those are my thoughts. I am interested to hear yours. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if this is a video you would like to see more of in the future, please let me know down in the comments section below. And also let me know if you've ever been to a monster truck show or event in your life and where it was. Who knows? Maybe you and I have crossed paths before. Again, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like it and share it with your friends. And please subscribe to us if you haven't yet already. Thanks, guys. Take care. Be well. I'll see you in the next review.